See, I want to turn to you on this because there is something about watching this. And as again, as a layperson, I look at this and I saw the video of people standing around. And as a layperson, I wonder, I'm witnessing a murder before me if I'm standing there. Legally, I want if I'm a bystander and I want to go and knock this police officer off Mr. Floyd and, and save this man's life. But legally, I'm not allowed to do that. So what is the recourse? If you're standing there as a civilian watching a police officer murder someone, you outnumber him. What's the recourse? What are we supposed to do when witnessing something? Like, stand back? I'm glad you asked me that. And I'm also, uh, I was terrified of that question. And as a defense attorney, um, I can't advise anybody to do something that's against the law. Moreover, it's, it's dangerous. They have the power of guns. And I hate to I hate to paint this as a us versus them thing, but melanated people understand that that's largely what it's been historically. So I would advise anybody, record. Try mm -hmm. to intervene verbally. Call 911. Please don't physically intervene. The media, like you said, they are, uh, like they always do, they're very picky and choosy about what they'll amplify and what they'll mute. And what they'll mute <laughs> always comports with whatever you know the agenda narrative is with the democrat party and and what people won't probably hear a lot about in this i mean for me the main thing is and i think it's going to be what they the defense focuses on will be the fact that he probably most likely could breathe just fine and he probably like I see a lot of people that are kind of like oh well there's some culpability by the police van and blah blah I don't think that at all am I alone in that like and it's not a racial thing oh Steve hey what's up buddy what's up only here to troll uh Steve come in the chat man talk with us uh but um Hi. uh I don't see it. So I've watched the video. I've watched all the videos many, many times. And what you see is uh, Floyd is acting insane from the very beginning and before in the video that you see when he's in the store. And he's saying he can't breathe the whole time. Like he's like, so like, why would the policeman think that there was any real danger? Because he, he had been saying that the whole time, right? I don't know. I don't want to get off your point, but that's kind of what I'm getting yep. at. It's like... Uh, people a lot of people out there they don't really i don't think they realize that they don't realize that if if he really couldn't breathe and he maybe he couldn't be it, w it probably was because of the overdose though in my opinion right. but i'm not you know i'm not a doctor or anything so we'll, this is gonna go for four weeks so i'm sure we'll see all of that right and i i, I agree like i think what you're touching on right now is the um the defense's main uh, objective to explain to the jury, which is that, yes, when you, um, they and, and they did a, an excellent job, I think, early on with the, the first witnesses that the prosecution okay. called, yeah. which was the strategy was you only came upon the scene at this certain time. You weren't there before. You weren't there when... Yeah, the interactions transpired before you started recording. You had no idea of what was going on, right? You had no idea the conversations that the police were having behind the car. Like they were trying to show to the jury, these are witnesses that were emotionally um, agitated by what they saw, but right. they had a limited understanding of the totality of the circumstances. They had no idea that um, George Floyd was complaining about not being able to breathe before he was put into that position. And also, I think they did a good job early on by establishing, and I, you highlighted this in one of your videos, that um, someone who's being choked out and who cannot breathe cannot have a conversation with someone. So I think right. they did a great job at sort of bringing that to light in terms of if someone's being ex asphyxiated, they can't breathe, and if they can't breathe, they can't speak. And that's right. and I think they'll have um, medical experts to testify to that fact. So if someone's saying I can't breathe, I can't breathe, it, maybe your your breathing is 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 um, labored, labored for other yeah. reasons. But exactly. it's not because you're being it's not because you're being asphyxiated. Right. So I think that's the point is how 
how did George Floyd pass away? Was it because he was being asphyxiated or was it because he had um, a, a, a conditions, health conditions on top of the chemicals that were in his body plus the stressful events that were transpiring at the time? That goes to a lot of what I've been doing videos about forever is just how the media, they paint this picture that's not necessarily accurate. And your average person out there whether they're loosely paying attention or they just sort of get it through osmosis to just you know go into work every day and the people they hang around um so people can get get easily brainwashed and a lot of people out there really believe that like black people are being hunted down and stuff the, the, it doesn't matter what the data and the, and the statistics show it doesn't matter because they right. just they believe it deeply and that I, that's a big problem here it's like hiding the truth you know it's right. like that's what they're doing because it's essentially the way they've set it up now is that it's rate even because I, I feel like a lot of people know it's bullshit but they think it's racist to go against it like oh well if i do that then i'm hurting black people so i can't do that i gotta go even though i know this isn't true it's for the better good and so they justify it to themselves i think that's going on with a lot of people and look i i, I have if a, a, a cop is corrupt and i I'm a sucker for First and Second Amendment audit videos, and I've been a huge watcher of cop block stuff for forever. So, like, I know that cops are out there who are ignorant and are power hungry and are abusing people's rights. But, and, and I'll get behind you if you can prove to me that that is what's going on. But I just am not getting that from this. I'm getting from this entire thing from right. the beginning that it's mostly manufactured now i'll say it when i first saw the video it disturbed me but as i saw the body cams and i got more perspective my attitude changed about it and i also saw what the media was hiding from us which is how we started the conversation um and ultimately that's what because there you know there's gonna be riots if he gets off and there'll probably be riots anyway but um it'll in my opinion it's incited by the mainstream media and I think that's part of why they won't report everything because it's like they're so invested in a certain perspective to go against it now because they set up this whole narrative that if you're against it, you're an evil racist. So now they couldn't ever possibly do it. You see what I mean? Like they've set up this situation where they painted themselves into a corner. Right, right. Because they would have to admit that their initial coverage was um, uh, they preempted the evidence. And so they jumped the gun and now they have to sort of like backpedal a little bit and um, acknowledge that their initial reporting may have not accurately reflect reflected the situation on the ground.